Did you guys meet online or did you know each other in person? First? Uh, Fran oh, and I met like online. coming in and out. Yeah. Yeah. Kev, you're, Kevin always has issues. He lives in, he lives in, I don't know. I have bad <laughs> reception right. here. I'll let Dan mostly talk. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll make do. It does not matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Fran and I met online in, in a couple of Star Trek uh, discovery chat rooms that we were defending Sonequa early on. Ooh. And then okay. um, Tamia, we met at Awesome Con. And Yvette came in at um, later Tech Two, Tech, wow. Tech, yeah, Virtual Trek. I always feel like Sneakwa reminds me of we we have one sister, and my sister is like a bubbling energy thing of joy. She's a dancer, and she has that like Sneak was kind of like yeah. everything is joyful and everything infectious. Like, yeah. yeah, exactly. We're, we're totally. Not like totally infectious like that like I yeah she just seems like such a such a joy you know yeah. mm -hmm. well it's right, really how, go yeah, ahead. How, can we, how can we help you well we're just we, give? <laughs> what? we got oh, questions we did you so watch our little answers. cartoon <laughs> <laughs> oh it's so joyous Good. I mean, oh, love dude. your little cartoon. The little cartoon <laughs> that could, you know. The little cartoon that could, yeah. I think um, in Chicago, we were um, got a chance to just gush a little bit about how much we love Prodigy, and you know, we we um, the sisters are of the opinion that um, the two animated series are creating the, some of the best Trek that's out there today, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, you know, you guys have talked a lot in your past about your growing up as with a love of Star Trek, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm just curious as to what did, when you were kids growing up with Star Trek, what did that teach you? Like, how did Star Trek influence the men that you became today? Mm. Wow. I mean, I mean, we weren't like, I would say we, we were respectful and we were fans of Star Trek, but we weren't like, solely like on the we didn't think we would ever get to be writing our own trek show so that's well, that never really <laughs> something and we grew <laughs> up like our introduction to trek was through the movies so mm -hmm. i i question what what kirk taught me <laughs> 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 while he did do some good things you know mm -hmm. uh, looking back i don't know if he was the best role model for me as, <laughs> as a young boy but i think but, that's where like our cinematic like um when we think of track, you know, visually, we think like we think big ending of where Spock dies. It's mm. massively emotional. Mm. Yeah, it's mass. It's it's epic for us. Like we were children of the '80s, and to us, Kirk and Spock were as big as Michael Jackson. Like they mm. were, and we were from Oregon. We never thought we'd ever have a chance to get into the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. So I think they were just icons in our heads. And to us, Star Trek to me is that relationship of Kirk and Spock of that two very different people learning from each other. And I think that yeah, value better together. So important. <laughs> and I think when we were approached about Star Trek Prodigy, the first thing we thought was in today's day and age uh, with, 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 with politics and stuff, I'm like, this is the time that different people need to start actually talking and really listening to each other. Coming together and yeah. being greater together. Yeah. Oh, I love I that. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> Easier said, easier said than done right, yeah so right, true right, right. so true but i think that's why it's so important that uh, we have a show that's speaking directly to a younger age group mm -hmm. um you know i mean it translates to us as well to adults but you know particularly for the younger ones um that's what we get them <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, how we, that's how we came in as younger ones so uh, well, well, speak, some, mm -hmm, go ahead. Can I just, and some kids shows are very disposable right mm. and, and a good trek show like i'm watching all the original series still you know i'm watching these and like they stand the test of time and so yeah. we're like let's make sure this show i want decades from now Kids are finding Prodigy for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, Starfleet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. No worries. No worries. I, I'm going to go back to Chicago. Um, I know when we met you guys in Chicago, you know, we were just seeing uh, Prodigy, the ending of it. And I was wondering why was there such a large break in the middle? I, I actually thought the season was over. I thought this was season two for a while. Uh, was the show designed? 
Was that 10. after 10? Okay. Yeah, like it was after 10. So I was wondering, it, was the show designed to be played like that or was that just beyond your control? It was designed to go 10 and then break and then 10. Oh, okay. Um, in the first batch, there was five and a break, a lot of because of COVID and, and you know, you set out to make a budget and make a show before yeah. COVID hits and then all of a sudden COVID hits and you're like, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. either rush it and get it out the door or we go, hey, this thing's going to last but hopefully the test of time. We got to do it right. Yeah. So, you know, that, that was uncomfortable conversations, but like it, it's it what was in the best intention for the show. In the mm -hmm. best, you know. Mm -hmm. But cool, as you'll cool. see, like, you know, we designed it as like, in essence, 10 episode yeah, I don't want to call them seasons, but our the twenty the first twenty okay. episodes are really going to feel like a complete story. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're just lead, leading up to the, the the final five are intense. I can't wait. Really dramatic. But yeah. each after each ten, it feels like something happens where you can take a little break. You know, okay. you know okay. the I'm kids good. save the miners. Okay, good. That was right. Good. Yeah, yeah. I like it. But we'll Love always tease you though. We'll always tease you about what's going to be in the next ten. So. <laughs> see i love that that's good track right there <laughs> we thought this was one of the best cliffhangers ever i mean we thought it you know 10 was just like okay wait, oh, wait for 20 man that's that's the end of this like that cliffhanger all right, all right. Stop, stop 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 playing with us now we only got cool. like a few screeners <laughs> i would say it's a cliffhanger but it's like a nugget it's a nugget, yeah. nugget yeah. that's you to look forward to okay. that's awesome yeah. Sabrina. All right. Well, I am the OG in the group along with Fran, and I am the sister that has, as they say to me, an aversion to animation. <laughs> Do you? And, <laughs> she does. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a hard pull for me to watch the animation. Okay. Show. But let me say this. You did a bonus show about how much Sabrina loved Prodigy. Right. So... <laughs> Yay. Yay. You go. I love it. So yeah. I was watching this and I saw different characters in the in the way that they were being drawn. And so I was saying, you know, Gwen and Doll remind me of anime and Speed Racer. You know, Zero reminds me of the Jetson. Murph, <laughs> I thought about, you know, My Little Pony and, uh, you know, Rock Talk. I was like, okay, that is the thing from, uh, you know, that's Jack Kirby there. <laughs> yeah, Jack Kirby. <laughs> and, yeah. and I'm Literally. like, okay, the Telluride with that little tooth and a little black nose, that is definitely Fred Flintstone, Hanna-Barbera, just stop it. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I, I want to know which cartoons <laughs> did you love growing up? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That, like, that maybe influenced this? We grew up with like G.I. Joe. I remember watching G.I. Joe. We were Yeah, Transformers, G.I. Joe was, but here's the hard part. It was linear TV mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it was somewhat serialized, but you know, it, we they would play them in order. We watched whatever was on TV, Saturday. Right. right. <laughs> we watched the block. The and whole then it got thing. Some PBS right. stuff. You're like, ah, I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> start throwing educational stuff at like 11 a.m. in the morning, and that kid that's right. That's when it was exactly. time to get up and do chores. <laughs> <laughs> I think, but even, you know, so with animation, I don't know how much an animation influenced us. Like, I yeah, because we didn't want to go into animation, so it obviously. Yeah, didn't I would say us. like when you look at our show, you're going to see a lot of Amblin Entertainment, like Spielberg oh, stuff, like uh -huh. TV, mm -hmm. and Goonies and all that sort of wish fulfillment and coming of age type of stories. Yeah. You'll see a lot of that. And also like, I was just showing my kids Flash Gordon, the 1980s, oh, yeah. like campy, <laughs> super fun, oh, rock yeah. music, colorful yes. outfit. You know, I loved that stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna hand it over to Fran. Oh, Fran. You, you're, you're muted, boo. Oh, Fran. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> While Fran tries to figure that, there we go. Here I am. Hey, right. hey, hey hello, hello. Hi. Um, I know that you've been involved with other franchises. You know, other huge trans uh, franchises. It's being a part of Trek. We had to. Dis there was a discussion about how I should ask this question. However, being a part of Trek, how has it been different 
or has it been different from the other huge franchises you've been a part of? Oh, it's the different. fandom. It's Excuse different me? because you know how much it means to people. You know how much Trek means, and you, and it's like wow. you're you're tiptoeing through a minefield, and you're like, don't want to go that. Right? It's <laughs> right. Canon. Canon. And there's so much before <laughs> us, right? Whereas mm -hmm. the other franchises with Lego, Lego, when we did the Lego movie in, in, in Lego Ninjago, there was very little Lego entertainment before what we right. worked on it. And what we saw were like, we could do better than that. Like Lego deserves better entertainment than that. Mm. So, mm -hmm. so that was different and easier. But Trek, you've got Oh my gosh! There's so much great stuff. Yeah, and, and everyone's right? ni everyone's knives are out, like waiting to cut you off. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah, we know? Like, me. Like, <laughs> How are they gonna mess this up? Let's right. see. Like, hmm. We always we always <laughs> say like, oh, we're not a kid show. But if anyone attacks us, we'd be like, hey, you're attacking a kid show. Hey. <laughs> 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 with, with, with the track history with over 50 years of history and all this stuff the fans the track fans are a different whole different body of people from the <laughs> other franchises yeah. so i'm glad you're here I, we love your show and i'm just amazed i'm, I'm amazed at the animation of it because it's so different from lower decks but the animation is so just beautiful. It's just mm, so gorgeous. Yeah. And thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you mm -hmm. for that. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm I'm you know, mesmerized by, by the storyline and the animation. So thank you. Well, it touches us because honestly, like when you're making something, you know, like kids are going to come to it because of how beautiful it is. But to have adults come to it and appreciate it means a lot to us because like that's something that was really important to us, wanting to make sure that, you know, Kate Mulgrew will tell you herself, like their adults can learn just as much as kids if they allow. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And like we're talking about the universe being so vast and deep now with shows, you know, that was their intention of not just make it's not just a kid's show. It's for the new viewer. It's for that person who's yeah. never, who's maybe been a little timid about entering into the Trek universe and doesn't mm -hmm. know where to start. Well, here's mm -hmm. a nice, easy way in. And it introduces the principles and, and the type of sort of uh, episode uh, sort of themes and ideas or, you know, and concepts that Star Trek likes to play with. And it gets you in and suddenly it's a launching pad to jump into Voyager or TOS or whatever you Great want. Great worlds, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I really, I, I feel like um, we've said it uh, actually a couple of times. Um, Yvette has actually said um, several times how this is the show that she can take to people who don't have any knowledge of Trek beforehand yeah. and yeah. use it as an introduction because it teaches you everything you need to know about Star Trek philosophy. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's like we are going along on that ride with these kids. And I think that's one of the things that's so endearing about it to me personally is that you know i'm i'm seeing it through fresh eyes again yeah. you know i was indoctrinated into these principles when i was really young but mm -hmm. to be able to go back and say and and try and it reminds me of what i what it was like as a child when i when i first saw um you know no kill i um you know and mm -hmm. and was like oh that's <laughs> not the monster you know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was exciting for us. Like when we were talking about the characters, you know, uh, creating the, a Medusa as a character, we're like, that's just going to blow kids' heads. Mm, like, yeah. like that, the concept of what is a non corporeal entity, yep. how it can drive a person crazy. I'm like, I love these little like nugget bombs that you throw into kids' heads that can really get them to think and get them to spark and get them to think of new ideas and think outside the box. So it's, it's, yeah. it's an absolute pleasure to be working. We wanted, that. yeah, when we, when we built the show for, for the we wanted it for the adult trek fans that this was the show that they never knew that they wanted mm -hmm. you know we, we designed it <laughs> so exactly how i feel it, it, yeah. i'm so happy and relieved mm -hmm. to hear that it's working because that you know you spend we've been on this for like three and a half years of our lives mm -hmm. devoted mm -hmm. to this and right yeah. thank god it's it's working <laughs> Okay. Bye, we we just yeah. want to say we love you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Bye bye. bye, -bye.